Alright, welcome back. This is going to be floors 11 through 20, except I'm probably going to put that as the title. So you already know that. This is Izgushi. This is Devil's Snubblot. And, um... Oh, there's this room. There's rats that appear if you do this. I forgot to actually show them, but you can probably hear them. Yeah, we can hear them, and I have the volume turned way down on the speakers. So what you do is you lure them out and then drop a bomb on their face. And then ideally get as close to the edge as possible to kill them all. And then uh, from there, you fight these guys, the Talmasaurs. I have a different strategy for this room and the, uh, the other room too. So actually now I feel like I need to complete it. <laughs> Just so you know what all the strategies are. Um... But don't be surprised if I don't actually post it until, like, five years from now. Because it, it is freaking hard. But if it does take more than five years, feel free to post and complain. That is the commitment that we just made. Oh, I missed one of the rats. Luckily he hit my shield, not me. Uh oh, that one did not hit your shield. Yeah, see, this is this room's actually kind of sloppy. Um, like I said, it's basically the same rules as uh, when I was doing the regular game, and um, so I don't have any uh, healing items in a bottle. But if I find any hearts, I, I use those. Hint, hint. <laughs> Why do they have the top? Because they want to kind of make sure you got through the game, I guess. Alright. Um, this, yeah, this room has a giant chew in it. Also, the entire game, including this part, I didn't know actually how to, uh, get the, like, you know, sometimes when you go into claw shot mode, sometimes it's looking over his left shoulder and sometimes it's looking over his right shoulder. Yeah. I had no idea how to control that. You can control it? Yeah. I figured that out while I was doing my... Harder Cave of Ordeals runs. How do you do it? Basically, when you hit the uh, claw shop button to go into this aiming mode, uh, if the cursor is on the left side of the screen, it'll be looking over his left shoulder, and if it's on the right side of the screen, it'll be looking over his right. Wow. It's that simple. So that's actually pretty helpful to know. And then these guys aren't bad, just... When you got it down to. You could probably even jump down right away. Because, uh, Giant Chew isn't that hard. It's like a squishy asteroid. Yeah! These guys. So, as I was driving today, the song, uh, Sentient Six by Nevermore came on my so iPod. Good. It is a really good song. It actually kind of reminded me about, uh, of I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, because I actually finally learned what that story's actually about. You can read it on the internet. Yeah, you actually read it. I didn't because I don't read. I read it last night. It's good. I'm gonna wait till they make a movie of it. Or make a check. video game. Oh wait, there already is one. Did you check? I can't. Mediocre reviews. Yeah. Well, the guy that wrote the, uh, short story actually wrote the video game. So... At least that part. Good. Hey, you should IMDB that in the near future to find out if there is a movie. Because they would totally make a movie out of that. Well... <laughs> I don't know. That would... Not in this country, actually. Yeah. I haven't read it, but I know a lot of the details of the story, and they... Yeah, no. <laughs> Maybe Korea or something will make it. Get a uh, Park Chan look on that. Actually, I think he's he started production on his first English language film. Yes, I guess. And there was like someone famous in it, but I forgot who. There's a lot of famous in it. No, I mean like a star that like regular people know. Like Nicole Kidman. Actually, I think that's it. There's some other like not Nicole Kidman famous, but pretty damn famous people. I forget their names. 
been forever since I've checked. Oh yeah, I did tell you about that. There wasn't any Gary Oldman, was there? That would be so good, but I don't think it was Gary Oldman. I want him to play Doctor Strange. Oh, this room I don't like because it's it's pitch black. You can hardly see anything. Like, you can kind of make out the bats flying around. And the thing is, normally, like, YouTube will make things darker, so you might not even be able to see them. But they're there. And if you can see them, but just barely, that's how it looks when I was actually playing the game. And it takes me a long time to, uh, get them. And in a situation like this, if you actually miss with your first four, sometimes it's better just to let it go, because it might pick some up as it's going around. Good choice. That doesn't help at all. Oh. <laughs> it lights up the area around me, and that's it. I still can't see shit. So while I'm bat fishing, uh, so that song came on, and uh, if, if you like metal, I, I suggest you check out Nevermore, because they're a pretty good band. Um, and their guitarist, Jeff Loomis, is just amazing. But I was thinking about them, I was thinking of, you know, those plot lines where there's like a, a supercomputer and it wants to kill all the humans because it thinks they're imperfect. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, are computers really that perfect? I mean, of course there's the obvious ones, like, they suck at thinking of things in context, and they don't know about human emotions, and how can something that doesn't know about human emotions govern humans, you know? There's a reason that politics is used to describe appealing to people and not actually running things smoothly. But there was also another thing that I thought of, and think about it, when is the last time that a computer has worked perfectly for you for an extended period of time. When did it do everything that you wanted it to? Yeah, it's probably never happened. And you could say, oh, well, that's just user error. Because there's a saying that, um... There's a saying that computers will do what you uh, tell them to, but not what you ask them to. Or, like... They'll do what you tell them to, but not what you want them to. Something like that. But then there's also, like, viruses, and you could be like, well, those are man-made, too. They're trying to, you know, mess with people. But that brings me to the next point. Oh, by the way, there's another... There's some more damage. That brings me to the next point. Computers can't tell when they have a virus. They might have antivirus software. But... By themselves, they can't really just say, oh, something's wrong with me. I should get on that. They just accept it. So, are computers really perfect and superior if they can't even tell when something's wrong with them? Um, well, you could say that the antivirus software becomes a part of them when you add it to them. In sort of, some sort of evolution thing, planned evolution, which isn't evolution at all. Yeah, but, but you, um, you need a person to add that antivirus software. I'm I taking, suppose. I'm taking a lot of damage in these floors. Yeah, that last room with all the, the dark one with all like the rats and stuff. I'm gonna tell you what my new strategy is for that one. Just hit them all with a slingshot before jumping down. That's what I do now. And then there's this room. This is one of the few rooms that gets easier on the second try. Normally they're either the same or they're harder because they add more enemies. But this guy has a, a Poe in it. And he's not gonna be there the second time, obviously. And he can't leave the room until you kill him the first time. So I don't know exactly how many Stalhounds show up on the first and second runs, but I'm guessing it's a similar number. I know there is one room that is quantifiably easier on the second run, but that's a little bit later. Oh yeah, and spin attacks. That ended a lot of Cave of Redeals runs. And here we go. One heart. <laughs> Why is that there? So that I can use it to beat it in, on the second try. <laughs> There's some rooms that have three. And also, uh... What am I doing in this room? This is the chew room. 
I mean, I guess since this was only my second try, I didn't, like, know optimal ways to do each room, I guess. And if you saw something sparkling on the ceiling on the way in here, that is a silver chew. And if you manage to kill it before it merges with something and scoop it up in a bottle, that acts like Great Fairy's Tears, which basically heals you completely and doubles your damage for a bit. But, like I said, not using anything from a bottle. And this room is all the uh, moving while aiming trick is really helpful. Or at least makes it pretty convenient. Yeah, see, there's a silver chew. And it's not there anymore because it merged with the purple one. But this is also the only room in the game where you can get a green chew. Did I, uh, did I explain that? I believe so. If not, um, both the notes are they were in the game to refill your magic and they took out magic. Yeah. And um, normally when two chews merge, they become the color of the most common one, which will almost always be purple. But if you manage to get a blue one... No, yeah, a blue one and a yellow one. See, there's the blue one, and I just killed it. If you get a blue one and a yellow one to merge, they turn into a green one. And I forgot exactly what happens if you drink it. But it's really tricky since there's so many other chews in this room. I might, like, go and get some footage of it during a run where I, I don't care about not losing health. Maybe take some... some potions with you. Maybe. You could pick up some heart cases. Actually, you know, I think I'm gonna try to do that. If I don't, then I'll put it in my second cave ordeals run through. Actually, yeah, just so I can get these up as soon as possible. I'm gonna... There's the yellow one. I'll do the green chew trick on my second cave ordeals run. I can't guarantee that I'll do it during the actual run, but I'll get footage of it and put it in the corner or something. And that is the, uh... This right here is the 20th room. What's she gonna tell you about? I think she basically just says, oh, good job getting this far. If you want to continue, you're gonna need this item. And she never actually says what it is, she always uses, like, really cryptic... Cryptic metaphor! Yes! Except they're not even metaphors. More of descriptions. They're more like Jeopardy clues. Yeah. That's it. I need something that can break ice. I wonder what that is. We'll find out next time!